Hi everybody. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of block charge plays on this one. Keep your eye on the lead administering the throw in. Just a quick note uh, that the uh, rule book regarding legal guarding position uh, does differentiate between initial legal guarding position and what you need to do to obtain that and then what you can or cannot do once the player has obtained the initial guarding position. So uh, of uh, Rule 4 and Section 23, 2, and 3, 2 is the initial legal guarding position, and Article 3 is uh, those items that uh, you can do after the initial legal guarding position is obtained. And it's definitely worth a look, guys, because you need to be able to differentiate between initial and after the initial legal guarding position. On this play, I don't have all of the uh, facts that we need for the game situation, but it appears to be close, end of game. Uh, and we have uh, some high intensity going on with a full court press. This is a crew of two. And uh, I want to call special note to uh, both the guys. But uh, in this crew of two, you know that you have to work harder in a crew of two. And these guys, especially this uh, lead here, he's going to move to his right to protect the sideline over there when the play goes that way. He's going to work hard to get back to see the play as it heads back towards the uh, foul lane. And he's working very hard to get uh, at both positions in a crew of two. And he's able to get a really nice look by working hard and getting uh, making a very nice defendable call on the uh, contact play and what he deems a player control foul. And that's just hard work. Additionally, our trail, uh, who was in good position to start, does not just stand there at the end. He does as he sees the ball coming towards uh, the uh, basket. He makes his move to go in and to see what help he can render in this situation. In a crew of two, obviously, you need to really work hard. A uh, little extra effort. This guy here in the lead position went to the left, then to the right. And he ended up getting a uh, pretty good look at a uh, game-changing or possibly game-changing call. This next clip is a uh, player control also. It's going to be coming right towards you at the top of the key, coming off of a screen. All right, so here we have an end-of-game situation that any call is a game-changing call or has the potential to be. So we're going to have a high impact and need to have a high degree of certainty on any call. Strike right down the middle. Um, they appear to be well positioned. They probably had a little meeting prior to the resumption of play, discussed clock, position, and who is where. They knew enough not to rotate here with the ball even on the far side. And everybody is in good position to referee the last eight seconds of this play. Again, in order to obtain initial legal guarding position we have to have the torso uh, facing your opponent and you have to have both feet touching the court which this uh, defender has uh, done and so he has established the initial legal guarding position and once we've established that the defender is in a legal guarding position it makes the play somewhat less complex and you'll improve your call accuracy. Uh, this player here, he's going to continue to uh, charge forward and makes initiates the contact. Additionally, he's going to drop that right shoulder. And when he does, he also pushes away with the right arm. And so not only do we have an initial guarding, uh, legal guarding position, but he's made some uh, illegal contact after that initial uh, guarding position. Uh, if you notice, uh, the center official quickly makes a good confident call however he does come up with the play, player control mechanic immediately as opposed to signaling foul first with a fist and that is going to uh, cause or has the potential to cause a block charge you want to make sure you're coming up with the fist first checking to make sure there's no other whistle and then indicate quickly your player control foul as you can see here goes right to the player control Next play is going to be a uh, block 
charge call also at the top of the key. And you're gonna to wanna to keep your eye on the ball handler at the top of the key. So on this play, we have a 40-40 tie in the fourth quarter, about four minutes remaining. Position-wise, the lead and our center official are in their dependable positions. Our trail uh, should have continued on further down, a good 8 to 10 feet below the 28-foot mark. And that would have put him closer to the play and still given him a great angle and an open look on this play. So on these block charge plays, we want to make sure we're looking for an initial legal guarding position. Here again, we want to look for an initial legal guarding position, which our official has deemed he has. So now he can use that information as he lets the play develop and finish. Once you ascertain that, you have options now. We're not going to call foul, obviously, on the defender. So what are the options that we have with the offensive player? One could be, and it's a defendable position, that he has committed an offensive foul, a player control and we could make that call and it is easily defended. However, with the knowledge and the game management level that you have, you have another option and that is to let this play develop and finish. 11 Green clearly gets himself into trouble with the contact and on his own, and he throws up a ball that goes out of bounds and the ball is returned to White. And in this case, the option of not putting a foul on 11 and not making a call here appears to be a good no call the lead and the center leave this call to our trail it's clearly his call he's a one-on-one -on -one matchup uh, in his primary coverage area these guys do a good job of trusting their partners staying in their coverage areas and letting this play develop and finish and the result is a very defendable good no call on this play you're going to want to watch the drive down the lane and be patient because we do have a floor view of this that, of course, was Simonson. He was open, though. Had a good look. Down, up, floater, no. And we're going to get a blocking foul. So Suffern will go to the line and shoot a couple. So on Blassengale, his first. I've seen a couple of glimpses of uh, what Fran O'Hanlon was talking about. So here we have a 10-point game at the end of the first half. And we can see here our lead is beginning a rotation as the ball settles on the opposite side. He's coming across. Uh, it's important to note that when he gets to his dependable position, keep an eye on when the drive starts. He does not pinch in to get the and move as the ball is coming towards him. He t stays still to get a good look and keep an, an eye also on our uh, old uh, center position here closest to us new trail he does not move quickly into the trail position he's in no hurry and alertly so and he ends up uh, staying where he is to get a very good look at this play and he also uh, moves towards the uh, lane circle in an effort to avoid uh, three blocking him out so that he can help with any subsequent rebounding activity or any activity that might occur after uh, the drive starts. So good job on the, uh, uh, the rotation and the position following the rotation by these guys. So as this play develops and our dribbler starts to penetrate, uh, we should be using uh, what's called verbal prompts and in our head saying, okay, who can hurt us? Where's the next player that can hurt us? And it's clearly not the dark shirt player at the foul line, the white shirt dribbler is going to be already by that player. So who can hurt us next? It's going to be one of the two players in the dark shirt in the uh, free throw lane. So important to move, uh, as, as our lead does, to pick up uh, both of those players and to see which one will be more active and more involved in the play as the dribbler gets closer and closer to the basket and to the defender. This official calls a block, and as we take another look at it from the end line camera, if we've used our verbal prompts and we've asked which player can hurt us the most, he has picked up the secondary defender. 
and by picking up the secondary defender, or in this case, probably defenders, he's able to isolate the one that comes into play early. And as a result, he can see that he has uh, not established a legal guarding position initially. His right foot and torso, uh, our right foot is still on the, off the floor. Our torso is not facing our ball handler. And as our ball handler alights into the air, our defender is still moving, sliding to the right. And as such, he's going to go underneath an airborne shooter, thus causing the illegal contact. And our uh, official right on top of it makes a good block call. Thanks for joining in. I hope these help, and as always, you, your work makes the game better.